Tales from the Future, A Meeting Millennia Later, from the book by Vladimir McGrath, The New Civilization, Part 2, Rights of Love, translated by Susan Dolney. A girl of about 25 named Liba came to one of the days of the courtship gatherings. Liba was dressed in a, single, in a simple skirt that fell just below her knees and an embroidery linen top. On her shoulder was a small purse on a strap. Libya didn't have many outfits. The girl was walking along the street in hopes of finding some kind of lodging on a private house. During the courtship gatherings, all the rooms, all the rooms and hotels and boarding houses had already been reserved beforehand. In any case, the girl didn't have the money to pay for an expensive hotel room, which is why she was looking for simpler lodging. But it wasn't easy to find private lodging while the, while the courtship gatherings were going on. Not particularly hopeful, Libya addressed a woman who was coming out of the gate of a private house. Hello, could you, tell, could you tell me please whether you might have room in your house where I could stay for the night, preferably on the less expensive side? The woman answered, there's no point in looking, my dear. Everything's been for for a long time. Everyone who comes arranges their lodging beforehand with an apartment agency. Don't waste your time. Go to the train station, although you won't even find a place to sit down there either. Thank you for the advice. That's what I'll do, most likely, Libya replied, and set off along the street in the direction of the train station. Hold on, dear, come here. The woman called on out to her, and Libya went. back over to her. Here's something you can do. Try knocking or ringing at that house, the one four doors down from me. There's a doorbell on the gate there. Push that button. Maybe the old granny will come out. She looks like Baba Yaga. She's a Greek with a hook nose. My husband said that all young Greek girls are beautiful, but the old ones are like witches. So dear, go ahead and ask her to put you up. Back when her man was still alive, she used to take a lot of people in, but he died. And since then, this is the third year she hasn't taken a single person. But you give it a try. Ask her. She might just take you in. Thank you. I'll I'll try that, said Libya, and she walked up to the house the woman had indicated. Indicated. She pressed the button once, and after a minute, she pushed the button on the gate again, but no one came out. Ten minutes passed. The door creaked, and a hunchback old woman came out of the house, groan, groaning, she made her way toward the gate along the path that was overgrowing with grapevines. She opened the gate and began thinking without even saying hello. What are you breaking down my gate for, girl? She asks discontently. I'd like to ask you to put me up. A kind woman, your neighbor, suggested it. She's not kind. She was having a laugh at you. I haven't taken anyone for a long time now. I know that. She told me that too, but I've been looking for lodging for the whole day without finding anything. And so I made up my mind to turn to you and see whether I might get lucky. 
you decided to see whether you might get lucky, you won't get any luck from me. You've all come here to get lucky. Did you show up to look for a, f a fiancé for yourself too? I want to meet my intended here. Please forgive me for bothering you. I'll head off to the train station now and spend the night there. It began spitting rain and the old woman muttered. <laughs> They're the band for my existence, this girl's. They're the band for my existence, this girl's. The band and it's begun to rain. All right, I'll set you up in the garden under the awning. There's a hammock there and a bench and some nails you can hang your clothes on. And you're paying me 500 rubles a night. Lydia was shocked. 500? And how much did you think I charge? Would you think to come to visit your relatives? I agreed to 500. It's just that I, I was hoping to spend about 10 days here. But it doesn't matter. I'll stay five. I agree to your conditions, grandmother. Then let's go to where you'll be sleeping. You'll have a look at it and you'll pay me for each day in advance. Five days pass and in the morning, Libya began packing her unsophisticated little things into her bag. The old woman came up to her groaning and leaning on a stick. You're all set to go, dear? You're off? Yes, grandmother. The five days have already passed. Yes, they've passed. Do you already have your ticket? The old woman asked and sat down on the bench. Yes, I bought a round-trip ticket. It's for five days from now. But maybe I'll be able to exchange it for today or tomorrow. You won't be able to exchange it. Such great gudgeons of, uh, gudgeons of folks have descended here. Here's what you do, dear. Stay another five days with me until the date on your ticket. I can't stay. I have nothing to pay you with. If you have nothing to pay me with, well, then don't pay. Just stay. Thank you, grandmother. Thank you, she says to me. Only nothing will come of your staying. Why not? I've been watching you. That's not the way people look for fiancés these days. Why do you get up with the sun? What for? All the fiancés are still asleep at dawn. And you go to bed early. That's just the time the evening parties are getting going. And you're getting ready for bed. All the fiancés are out and about till midnight. You're already asleep by ten. You dress like a nun and you don't wear any makeup at all. That's not how people look for fiancés these days. My body, grandmother, I'm preparing my body for my meeting with my intended. That's what I try to keep my regime. I don't wear makeup so that he'll be able to recognize me. <laughs> recognize you, dear? Recognize you, you dear, or cookie in the head, cookie in the head. My mama tells me the same thing, but I can't do a thing with myself. I often have dream where he's searching the whole world for me and just he can't find me. Dreams, you have dreams. And have you had them here too? Yes, twice already. One time it was as if I was strolling around a big garden and he was also there, but we just couldn't manage to get to each other. And it was as if I was hearing his voice. He kept calling me. Where are you? Where are you? You heard it, his voice? You should probably go see a doctor, dear. What do you have? to drum it into your head for you about an intender. So you even hear voices in your sleep. 
Sometime I have a dream where it seems that he had, he and I lived together sometime long, long ago. And we had children and grandchildren. You lived together, had children. Now, dear, can you describe what he looks like too? Yes, I can. He's half a head taller than I. Brown haired and brown eyes. A kind smile, a small gap between his front teeth. A dignified gait. A gait? in his gait but what if you meet someone different I've met some before at home mama yells at me every time says my dreams are keeping me a virgin <laughs> keeping you a virgin of course they are with dreams like that you'll never find a fiance never meet one you know dear here's what I'm going to tell you tonight Take my flower shawl, flew it around its shoulders, and tie it in, in a kind of stylish way, and take a stroll along the shore later in the evening. Thank you for your concern, Grandma, but I can't throw a, sh uh, a shawl over my blouse. I embroidered the design in my blouse myself. It came to me in a dream and if as if some time long ago I stroll in the garden with my intended wearing a blouse with that design well that design you stroll well dear I don't know maybe God be your judge there comes milk by the house on a table and I bake a flat cake have something to eat I'm going to go to see the neighbors the old woman headed off, groaning. She mumbled under her breath. I bought it all down on my gray head myself. Well, I'm a fool. I let her in, and I have to look after her. I'll go and convince the neighbor's son to court her. Yes, let him court her. Only he's got black hair, and she needs a brown hair, one with a gap. And the neighbors don't have one like that. Starting in the morning, Libya wandered around the square. For lunch, she bought a little pastry filled with potato. As she was walking past the restaurant, a group of men was coming out. They were laughing and merrily talking back and forth in some foreign language. When they saw Libya, they started speaking to her in their language. But Libya couldn't understand the foreign speech and walk on past. The men immediately began talking with some other girls. And suddenly, without even looking back, she felt that someone had left the group of merry foreigners and was walking after her. She knew for certain that he was walking after her and no one else. She even counted his step without walking faster herself. And for some reason, her heart was fluttering. She could sense his breath behind her. And suddenly the man walking behind her said, in a language she didn't understand, With you, O oh beautiful goddess, I could create a space of love for all eternity. Translation from German. Libya couldn't translate the words from the German, but for some reason she whispered, I'm prepared to help you in the great co-creation and turn to face the foreigner. Before her stood a young man, half a head taller than she, with brown hair and brown eyes, with a kind smile and a small gap between his front teeth. He extended his hand to Libya, and Libya, numb, not knowing what was happening, leaned against his chest. He embraced her trembling body as if he had known it forever. The planets invisible high above them shook with the light. Oh, how many events have they had to create? How many threads of fate had they had to carry throughout the centuries? 
but it had work. They had met and embraced. Vladimir and the beautiful Lubomila. And it didn't matter if they didn't remember the past. Their souls, their souls would create a beautiful future. People on the beach were perplexed. Why were that young man and that girl creating some kind of sketch or drawing on that sand? They were speaking different languages, but they seemed to understand each other. Now they discuss what they're drawn. Now argue a bit or suddenly lightly agree with each other about this or that and caught up in their drawing. Lamilia and Vladimir also didn't know that they were drawing on the sand the very plan for a marvelous homestead that they had created 5,000 years earlier before their wedding. The pond should be here and it should be round, Vladimir announced in his language, digging out a little small hole in the sand. That's not at all the way it should be, Lobmilia smiled. The pond should be oval, and she corrected the circle, making it an oval. Yes, exactly, Vladimir agreed, as if recalling something. An oval pond is better somehow. And in the evening, they went to the house where Lumia was, was staying. She asked the granny land, landlady permission for her companion to spend some time with her before she went to sleep. The landlady gave her permission. Lumia fell asleep in the hammock, smiling. He sat on the bench, rocking the hammock ever so slightly and taking great care to drive away the various gnats with a branch. And he was singing something ever so softly. And the old woman pulled the curtain outside the tiniest bit and watched him from the window of the house until the early morning light. In the morning, a pitcher of milk and flat breads covered with a white Plot stood on the table in front of the house. There was also a note written in an elderly hand. Lamilia read it. I'm off on some errands. I'll be gone for two days. Guard the house and so as to guard it, live in the big room. There's food in the refrigerator. Libomilia and Radomir left together. But where did they head? The centuries will show us where the family line will rise up.